My name is Jeff St. Laurent. This is the Live Tuesday Call, and we've got a good house of people on the line. We've had some good conversations welcoming them in, uh, getting them, uh, getting some ideas on kind of their thoughts around the topic today, which is how to keep coaching clients long term. And, um, and then ultimately, not only is that going to enable us as coaching clients to help them more, because obviously we're, the longer we're with somebody, the more we can assist them. But then also, if we think about it in business terms, um, which is very important, it's going to you know, increase the longevity of the client, increases our re you know, consistent revenue over time, which is you know, healthy revenue is very important, uh, consistent income, especially as an entrepreneur. Um, and also when you have less turnover, <laughs> for Mike on the call, that's for you, right? Um, he's a turnover guy, one of my clients that I help. But uh, you know, when you reduce turnover, uh, obviously you don't have to get as many new clients and you can be at capacity, if you will, knowing you know, how many capacity clients you can work with on a weekly basis. It's easier to stay at that level when you have less turnover as well. So we're gonna be hitting those points in just a second, just a few notes of business before we get rolling. Um, I do record these calls. These calls, they're on my website, sellingcoaching.com. If you go to the university, that's the, the university. I mean, it, it is what it is, right? It sounds like uh, it's got a bunch of information in there, very, very specific and valuable. Um, and that's, that's my gift to coaches as I help them transition to a full-time business. Um, so I've got the call recordings in there. I usually post them there on Fridays. And then obviously you've got not only those, but also uh, quite, quite a few, I mean, I've got hundreds. <laughs> oh, uh, well, over a hundred, how's that? Um, of some shorter videos, and they're all specific to um, helping coaches transition to a full-time business. So that's a great place to start. Um, if you also want some more interaction and some other great things that are going on with other, a bunch of other coaches, um, at the top of my website on every page, sellingcoaching.com, you'll see a banner that you can click to join my private Facebook group. If you're not a member of that, um, definitely at least consider checking it out. We got a lot of great things that go on in there. It's also a great place. I love that because it's, it's a really great interaction um, for us where I can, if, you know, if you're commenting or participating, we got some uh, visibility challenge going on right now where we're creating 30 videos over 90 days. So um, check that out if you're not there. I'd love to have you in there and get to know you better in um, the Facebook group. And then lastly, um, you know, the university is a great place to start. But obviously, if you're in that place where you're, you're serious about taking your business to that full-time level and you know you need some guidance and some specific help, um, I do one-on-one -on -one mentoring and my group mentoring program as well. So if that's of interest, you can obviously go to my website under the Work With Me page. Just scroll to the bottom. I got a little form there. Fill it out. And then we can just, uh, that comes directly to me. And we'll just create a conversation and see where it goes. So now we got the business out of the way and we're getting into the serious business on understanding how to keep uh, coaching clients long term. And you know, there's a lot of uh, points around this. So I'm going to start to go through it and, and you know, just sharing some things that have worked for me over the years um, and some of the fundamentals that, that I do on a regular basis that I know have worked. And the things I'm sharing, um, they're things that I've done and do regularly. And they've worked to the point where, and I'll give you some statistics that I know on my business. And in the numbers in your business, don't ever underestimate the numbers and understanding them. You don't have to be a, a statistic freak, uh, but you've got to know your basic numbers, not only your income, your expensive, expense numbers, and also deductions, that's important as well, but also just knowing some basic statistics. And some of the statistics are um, basically, you know, the clients you're working with, um, how long they're working with you as well. Um, and on average, um, the, the average client works with me for about 20 sessions. And I've got people that, are, that go much longer than that. And the, then other than that, they're starting about nine sessions or so. Um, but the average client goes for about 20 sessions. Um, and that 20 sessions typically is over the course of um, nine to 12 months. That's how long it takes us to go through those 20 sessions. Usually it starts, we go through quicker in the beginning, the first three months, meeting weekly, maybe every other week, um, but then we spread it out over, over the next uh, six months or so. And that gives you an idea of kind of like this, the time span. But I want you to start to understand that in your business in terms of you want to know, I'll say it like this, how much the average client is worth to you. I, I don't want you to think like, oh, they're just, 
you see everyone as a dollar sign, but I'm just talking from a business level right now. Um, you want to know that the average client is worth, you know, if they're worth 20 sessions, it's times whatever you're charging, and that's what the average person from a dollar amount. And I'm just talking business perspective there. It's just going to help you with revenue. It's going to help you also understand um, predicting revenue in your business. In other words, as an entrepreneur, we <laughs> there's, unless you've got some type of recurring uh, revenue set up in your business, meaning your people are paying you on a monthly basis over a certain amount of time, then you can have some predictable income. But most of the time, if your clients are paying you on a, you know, when they hire you type basis, um, there's really no prediction of when we're going to get a new client. Um, so when we're doing this as a full-time thing, and that's our only source of income, you got to be able to understand money. you got to be able to manage money well, distribute it well, because the bills are consistent and their expenses are consistent. Um, but then also is understanding, you know, on average, how many clients do you get on an average month if you're doing your marketing activities and what's working for you? Um, and then lastly, you know, how long is that person typically going to stay with you? I mean, you might get an anomaly and they could stay a very long time. You might get an anomaly and they might stay a very short time. Um, but on average, where are they at? So that's just the first piece is starting to understand some of those numbers. But let's start going into some of these uh, strategies and some thoughts around this. So the first thing um, is when you start off and what you're selling them in terms of a coaching package. So I have the mentality when I work with people is I offer a package of nine sessions to start. And I, whenever I work with my mentoring clients, I always recommend nine sessions. And the strategy behind the nine sessions is very important. It's not just a random number I picked. Um, I actually have another Tuesday call I did uh, about how to set up a uh, pricing structure. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, price structure and session structure. Um, so if you went to my university and typed in, you know, pricing structure in the search bar, that, that call would basically pop up. Any of those keywords where I will elaborate on this in a, there a lot more detail. But for the sake of now, I'll just say that the nine sessions are very important because in that amount of time, usually it takes us about two and a half, three months to go through um, if we're meeting on a weekly basis, I find now that I'm mentoring um, coaches to transition to full-time business, it's, it's taking a little bit longer than three months. But either way, in that nine sessions, what I found is, is in terms of the cycle of results, this is very important because I've sold packages, uh, t 12 packages of coaching sessions. I've sold packages of six and seven and eight, just you know, in my days of trial and error, if you will. And what I found is, is the nine is the sweet spot in terms of renewing, meaning them uh, continuing on with you afterwards. And here's the result cycle in, in a nutshell, is typically when someone hires you, the first uh, two weeks or so is that kind of euphoric state of, I hired a coach, you know, I'm excited, there's hope, you know, there's, it's not doom and gloom, it's like, you know, I, I'm starting to move forward and I'm, I'm excited. It's, I'll parallel it maybe with a honeymoon, uh, if you will, phase of a relationship where it's just like, this person is just the most wonderful person on the planet, you know, and you're in love. And so there, there's that first two weeks or so. Then usually weeks three and four in the coaching relationship is where kind of reality kicks in. It's just like, well, you know what? Even though we hired a coach, it doesn't mean everything's gonna change. And you, typically people kind of get hammered, if you will, in, in the reality of like, wow, I actually gotta do some work and nothing's changing overnight. And so it doesn't mean that they're down or things are bad, but they just come off of that just euphoric high, so to speak, and the work's in front of them. And so they might run to some challenges or just the reality of their situation um, is just ever present. So that's typically weeks three and four. Um, so it is down, if you will, energetically from at least the first few weeks. And so from there, the next few weeks after that, like five and six or so, is kind of like regulating them. That's getting them back to like the, the, the putting their feet on the ground, so to speak. And it's just like, okay, then now we're starting to take some, you know, c consistent steps forward. We're starting to start to work, doing some of the work. Um, and so it's not like it's high or low. It's just like, okay, we're starting to make some progress and we're starting to just bear down a little bit. Then that brings us into like weeks seven and eight. And typically by week seven and eight, that's where they start seeing something happening. It's not like, you know, these magnificent results, but it's like, you know, they're more aware, they're gaining some clarity, you know, they're starting to see things happen in some ways. Uh, not at the level with which they, you know, oh, this is like, it's accomplishing it, but typically something's happening. So there's some positivity and they're starting to be like, oh, 
the, the, the fog's clearing up a little bit. So typically what I find is by that ninth session is they're like, this is awesome. They, they're, they're excited about this. They're moving forward. And it's not necessarily at, at a huge, you know, bullet, bullet pace, but it's like, wow, this is good. And, and that's the time where um, typically they're in that spot where it's like, all right, well, now, now what does this look like? Now we start to get onto some bigger things. Now that we're kind of like got out of that space and we're really starting to make some progress and create some strategies, now it's like, okay, what does it look like? Where are we going? Um, what are we focusing on? What does it look like now that we're here? And it sets us up in a position where they're at that place where they're valuing what we do and they're seeing some of the results. And typically that's the point where people buy. It's also like the same thing with the complimentary session is typically they've got this challenge that they're working through. They got the need, the timing's right. You're there, you have a great session and they're like, wow, this is awesome. That's when they're ready to go. Um, the nine sessions typically brings them back through that result cycle I just described and brings them to that place where they're like ready to go again, all right? What I found was if you're selling packages and working with people for shorter than that, uh, right, you're ending up in, in some of those phases where they're not quite getting there. They haven't quite gotten to that place where, um, especially if, like a month or a month and a half or even up, you know, up, up, to, up to eight sessions or so, they're just shy of just that feeling of like, wow, this is really good or in having some of those breakthroughs, so to speak. Um, so that can typically uh, inhibit them continuing on. Doesn't mean it won't, um, but also what I found is if, I go, if you go too long with the initial package, so to speak, of like up to 12 sessions, and again, I, I've sold packages of 12, and of, of the, what is it, I think it's 25, I have to look again, I think 25 packages I've sold um, of 12 sessions, not one person renewed, never renewed on a 12 package, but nine was always that sweet spot. And because what happens is, is now once you get past that nine, now it's, it's like you're on a steady course. I mean, you have your, your ups and downs, so to speak, but you're on that steady course moving forward. So when you get on that steady course moving forward and, and then you get to session 12 or so, you know, even a month or so later, it's just like they're good. They just feel good. And it doesn't mean that they shouldn't be working with you, but that's the point where you begin talking about, well, what next? And are we continuing on from there? And so that's where I found like just, I was not getting renewals there. And I feel like that time frame from the results cycle I talked about is just too long. And that's why number one, the first thought of how do we keep the longer term clients is let's set them up right from the beginning in terms of the strategy of how long that first phase of our work is together. And that leads me into what I'm saying next is, is that the language we use at point of sale, if I can say it like that, or the complimentary session is very important. So in other words, uh, through trial and error and uh, enough working with enough clients as they'd get to the end of the quote nine sessions, you know, I, I found people were saying like, um, how many sessions do we have left? How many, how many sessions do we have left? Or, oh, you know, tomorrow or, or next week's our last session. And they started using some of that language or even they'd get to the nine sessions and some people would be like, well, this is our last session today. And I was like, well, do you want it to be? They're like, well, no. They're like, well, I'm like, well, why does it have to be a last session? They're like, well, you know, you said we have nine sessions together. I'm like, oh, that's when I started learning. I'm like, oh, I, I need to start changing my language around this, you know, at point of sale and all the way through. So some of the things that you want to be cognizant of when you're, when you're talking about your rates and your coaching packages is the language you use. In other words, when I, at point of sale, I like to tell people, I, we start off with nine sessions as opposed to we have nine sessions. Big difference in terms of this is the first time they're hearing you know, how you work with them. So I, we start off with nine sessions that typically takes us about three months to go through. And then you know, I describe a little bit more. And then uh, as I start to talk about it, it's like that's our first phase of our work together. You know, and then once we get to that nine sessions, it's a great reevaluation point to kind of see where we've come and then also reevaluate, you know, where are we going together? And then if at that point you, you continue to see the value that you see now, uh, we can discuss, you know, what continuing our relationship looks like at that point. And I, and I also say, you know, most people, you know, work with me beyond that point, but this is a great place for us to start and to, for us to, you know, really create some great accomplishments um, starting to move you forward. So if you can start to hear, if you're on the other end of that as a listener and someone who's potentially you know, you know, hiring you, 
now you start to get the impression it's like, okay, well, this is the first phase. And, and it's, not, it's not suggesting at all that this has to be finite or we have to stop at nine or this is the only option for you. Um, again, that's a big piece that I found and it was only because of this language. Um, it doesn't mean that I don't, I don't ever hear someone say, we've got two sessions left, et cetera. But what I found is, is what I never hear anymore is um, them, them, their impression that we only can do nine sessions. And also the amount of, the amount of times I'll hear, uh, oh, we only have you know, a few more sessions left or something like that is very, very infrequent, whereas before it was happening you know, quite a bit. Um, so just that language alone um, and also people's awareness in clients and saying like, oh yeah, I know, I know um, next week's our ninth session and I know we want to talk about, you know, they'll proactively bring up and say, I know, you know we need to talk about you know, what continuing on you know, looks like. So I know that you know, these efforts in my saying this um, is paying off in the sense that it's, it's just the expectation, right? When you set someone's expectations up, that's what they expect, and that's how it, they roll because that's what they've been told how it happens. Um, even in the, the contract that I send people, um, I just call it a welcome letter. It's not really a contract. It's so it's I'm very low key and, and easy with uh, with what I do. But with it in there, it says you know, but the nine sessions, and then like this is and even with payment structure. I just word it in the sense of letting them know, you know, this is what you've agreed upon to pay right now. You know, when it, com when it comes time for more sessions, I actually phrase it like that in in welcome letter. You know, when it comes time for more sessions, you can continue with what you know, you did today, or you can let me know, you know, a different payment form, whatever works best for you. So even in there, like I continue on with that language. So setting them up with that expectations is vital. The next phase I want to talk about is uh, session by session. So th this is the way, this is my philosophy when it comes to a client is I want to, I want to think long term with them. So I'm always I'm always talking long term, and and I maybe I, I used to do this. I still do it in some some ways. But when I was dating, um, you know, especially in, in uh, college and stuff, like when I really liked someone, like part of my way of kind of like testing out whether they liked me or not. And I could have actually had just had a conversation, but to really test it and see how how what they saw for the future, I would I would talk in future terms and be like, oh yeah, you know, when we do this. Or like, oh, we could we could do this together, or you know, it, and I would talk in future terms, and so, and I would I would also be cognizant and aware if you know my my girlfriend at the time would kind of say anything like that, you know, and, and anyone in relationships knows, you know, when someone says something like that, and they and they refer to the the two of you doing something in a future date, whether it's a month out or you know a year out or something like that, especially if the relationship's newer. And you like the person, you know, you get to that point of like, oh, it feels good. It's like, oh, wow, they see us, they see us together in, in the future, you know, whatever. And so I want you to think, um, I'm trying to relate it to something maybe you've experienced as well um, and can appreciate. So same thing here with your clients is talk to the future. Talk to see that, you know, pay attention to what they say as well in terms of, you know, you work together in the future and what it looks like. And, and what they're valuing in that sense, but also for you, talk about what's happening in the future is, you know, you know, once we get you past this first phase or once we gain clarity around this, you know, this is work we're doing now, but once we get you there, that's when it's gonna be time where we can start to talk about X, Y, and Z. So, and this is not just in a complimentary session, so at every single session I have with somebody, I'm thinking, sell the future, sell the future. And I'm not really thinking sell the future in that, those terms, so to speak, but, I, but I'm thinking like, where's our work beyond the next few weeks, beyond the next few weeks? I don't care what number of session we're on. Like, I don't think like, oh, this is session two of nine or whatever. I don't care where we're at. Even on, on session number one, I'm thinking, you know, where are we working two or three weeks down the road, two or three weeks down the road, months down the road? And I bring those up whenever possible. You know, whenever they start creating some su success or especially when they start to gain that clarity, start to have breakthroughs, start creating those results, that's very important to, you know, obviously celebrate those results, celebrate those successes. And now let's relate it back to a bigger picture. Because see, as humans, we have to realize, uh, and this has been my experience when people hiring me, is that n not so much necessarily as what I'm doing now as a mentor, 
um, helping coaches transition to a full-time business. Um, but in, it, with life coaching especially, I'm, I'm, I found that people get to a spot where things are really bad enough. You know, hey, rock meet bottom, right? And they're the rock. And so, and it's just, it, things are bad. It, they're bad enough where they can't ignore them. Because if things aren't bad enough, people can ignore them and they just kind of drift along. And even if they're kind of underwater a little bit, they, they, can, they can swallow it, so to speak. They can manage it, they can handle it because they don't have the time, they don't have the money, they don't have the blah, they, but they have the excuses, right? But when it's bad enough where they can't handle it, that's when they start you know, potentially looking into something. They met, hopefully they come across you and then next thing you know, you know they're working with you. Um, but so when things are going good, Typically, then, there becomes less value for someone in, in theory, right? So that's why it's vitally important as we work along with our, with our clients. Every session, it's like, where is this projecting out? They're creating some success. Great. How does this come back to a bigger picture? It's us not allowing them to settle. It's, it's us now taking this and, and bringing it upon to bigger challenges. You know, whenever um, some, uh, one of my clients, or whenever they create success, I'm always managing how hard I can push them. And I say that as like, hey, listen, you know, you're creating some success. We've had a couple weeks where, you know, you're on a roll right now. You're doing well. Things are starting to click. You know, I, I know we have a lot, uh, you know, we have a big road ahead of us. So I want to, you know, how hard can I push you? How much can I give you? Let's start testing that, you know, and, and I always try and show them that, that bigger picture of where they're going. Um, and oftentimes, you know, with, with clients, we start to, we have to understand um, that it's when they're working on like, let's say an area, if it's a relationship or, you know, their business, et cetera, especially now as I mentor coaches, you know, working with the business. But a lot of the times you, you might find out that it's like, wow, we, we don't actually have to talk about the business, uh, you know, because there's another aspect of their world. You know, maybe they're just compromising themselves, right? All the time. and and. So now it's manifesting in the sense that they're not actually moving forward on some things, but they're compromising themselves. And, and how that relates to their world holds them back from accomplishing things. And so it's getting to some of those deeper issues or deeper challenges that they're going with. So it's constantly being aware of those, um, constantly being aware of where the value is for them. What I found consistently working with clients over the years is that a lot of them, once you get past even session three or four, or not even, even sometimes before then, sometimes they come to the call and, and now that they're talking about it, now that they're addressing something, you know, not much has changed, but they feel better about something. And then they come to the call and they're like, wow, I just, I don't know what we're gonna talk about today. Or, you know, like they, they get in there like, wow, I almost like canceled because it's just like, I didn't even know what, what would go on today or what we because I feel pretty good about some things. And like, I, I wanna say this with whatever, 100% of the time, just for emphasis, but the majority of the time, that's when I found that I, I would have my best sessions with the clients, when they'd come to the call with, quote, nothing to talk about, or they didn't know where they'd going, because it just, it's like the boomerang, you just throw it and it just comes right back to where it's supposed to come through, right? You just have to trust that the conversation's gonna go where it needs to go. Um, and with that being said, you know, with your clients is, that's why I, I don't, Mentoring right now with what I do, I have some type of a structure in terms of you know, helping clients uh, you know, transition to a full-time business, but even now, um, or what I recommend for you as a life coach, no matter what your niche, I don't recommend um, you have a, a certain structure when it comes to coaching. If you're doing a structured program, that's different, obviously, but if you're doing just you know, uh, coaching, um, keep the bigger picture in mind, but each week when they get there, or whatever type of frequency you're meeting at, um, you gotta kinda go where they're at. And, and you've got to have permission to, and, and understand, you know, where's the value for you today? You know, routinely, and, and those of you that are mentoring clients that are mine that are listening to this, you know, even with what we're working on, which might be something specific, I'd be like, hey, what do, what do you want to receive from today's call? What do you want to get out of today's session? You know, even the people that are calling into this call, you know, I like to know, well, what do you, what do you want from today? What some questions that you answer? I asked that before people call in. You know, I want to get an idea of where that value is for you, and I want to try and weave that into the call, you know, the information where I can. And so that, that's a big piece is understanding where the value is for, for this person right now. I look at it like this is, um, 
I said before I, I sell the future, in other words, I was always projecting of what we're doing together in the future, of how I can help them in the future. Just like in a comp session, I always project out you know, where we're gonna be taking this so they can start to visualize how we can work together. I do that on a session by session basis, but th then also um, in terms of the future, but also session by session, I want you to be able to really start to understand where is it valuable for you today. I want you to leave off, I want you to hang up the, the call today feeling like, wow, that was kick ass. That was incredible. That was valuable. You know, I want I want my clients to be able to say like, "Wow, this this is awesome," and I want to have that feeling. It's I don't force it. I don't you know. But the only way I find that out is is where are we at today? Where you know, where's the value? What do you want to receive from the call? You know, hanging up the call in an hour from now. You know, what do you want to have accomplished? And and if they don't know, we'll get there. And I and I do some check ins as we go along, depending on how long the session is with that person. And I want to make sure that by the end, um, and I ask them, you know, it's like, so what did you receive from our call today? You know, if they're not, unless they're, you know, actually actively talking about it, being like, wow, Jeff, this was so valuable, or wow, I love that you did this, or I, I just feel so clear right now. Um, unless they're saying something like that, I'm always asking, you know, so what did you receive from the call today? Where's the value? Where do you, where do you see yourself going? You know, how are we doing together? I always check in, you know, every other call or something like that, I'm checking in. How are we doing together? You know, we've, you hired me a couple of weeks ago, or, you know, you hired me a week ago, you hired me three weeks ago. You know, how are we doing on this? How are you feeling about, you know, our work together as our coach? Like, I'm always checking in. It's, it's not overboard. It's not like a nervous, like, oh my God, I want to make sure I'm doing a good job. I'm not coming from that standpoint. It's, and that's an important distinction. Um, it's, it's more of just like, hey, how are we doing? And I, I want to ensure that this is, you know, I'm over delivering and, and, and um, really providing, you know, more than the, what you ever expected. Um, and so just use your barometer of that, but be aware of those things um, and remember those things. Um, it's it's got to become a part of your philosophy and how you work. You know, I, I always like to, I don't say under promise necessarily and over deliver. I just like to over deliver. And I just like to, because as a coach, I don't, I don't believe we really promise anything necessarily other than the natural premise of the relationship, but it's more of understanding, you know, where, where do they want? And, and it's all about value. Remember, why they will stay long-term is because they see value. And when someone sees value in something, they continue doing it. And when they, when they have that value, the money doesn't become an issue. If money becomes tighter for whatever reason, and yes, you know, a meeting on a frequent basis, sometimes it can get costly um, if you're meeting you know, four times a month over the course of time, but typically over the course of time too, the, the need for meeting on a more frequent basis becomes less. Um, I've got quite a few clients right now, some that meet on a, every other week, some meet every other month. I've got one that I've met with right now, they've been going, um, it's on her third year and she meets once a month. Um, I've got uh, business coaching clients, like corporate clients. I've got two of them. And one's been going on three years, one's been going on six years. Um, and those are just meeting on a less frequent basis or as needed basis. Um, and so it's understanding where the value is for those people. That's such an important piece um, of that. Um, another piece to it is, is how they pay. Uh, what I, I'm a big advocate of is, um, number one, always take credit cards over the phone um, as opposed to like a PayPal sending someone a link, et cetera. Um, I just believe it's at point of sale, like you've got to get the commitment right then and there. You can't hang up the phone, et cetera, and then, hey, I'll send you a link. Um, you, you need to get that payment. You know, you do not have a client until the money's in your bank account. That's the bottom line. Um, and if you can live by that philosophy, um, it's going to save you a lot emotionally because it's so easy to think, I got a new client when they haven't committed yet and then they just don't show up and they fall off the face of the earth the next week. So you've got to get that commitment. But either way is um, take, having the ability to take credit cards over the phone um, and then additionally uh, reoccurring payments. So recurring payments where you can schedule um, people that were there a certain number dollar amount comes out every month, every two weeks with whatever consistent frequency. 
that's been probably one of the best things I've ever done for my business. Many years ago, I started that. Um, but when it comes to um, coaching clients, et cetera, you know, I prefer to take um, the payment up front, but if for a reason they can't do that, I can break up those payments. And, and some people to the point where they wanted it so bad and they just didn't have the cash flow to do it where, I mean, I, I've got some people that have, I have two different credit cards on file and every other week it charges $50 on one and then two weeks later, $50 on the other. So essentially they're paying me $100 a month and some of those people like I haven't coached with in a couple of years and they're still just automatically making those payments, right? And so what that does is it sets up a situation where it allows someone to uh, coach or work with you on a budget that works for them as long as they're cool with that and you can set those payments up where I don't have to think about that stuff. Obviously, you, you might get a good decline here and there, but if you create a strong relationship with your clients, um, you shouldn't have to worry about being screwed or anything like that. Um, have there been times over the years that um, I didn't get my money? I wouldn't call it getting screwed. I call it situationally screwed. Um, but yes, so the answer to that is yes. Um, however, the, the positive end to that has far outweighed um, the small revenue that I've lost over the course of over many years that I've been doing this. So those recurring payments is important. And the reason I say that is, is number one is when you have their credit card information on file or, or you've got recurring uh, payments set up, We've got to make buying easy for people. We think in today's world, how easy is it for people to buy? I mean, if you want to go buy a song, what do you do? You log into iTunes, you press a button and buy. It either buys it automatically, you just have to enter a little password, and, and the f uh, song is on your phone in you know, however long it takes to download it. Not long, right? Um, it, it's so easy to buy things. You go to Amazon and everything's uploaded. Your credit card's on file. I mean, all your subscription services, it just comes out automatically. Half the time you forget you're subscribed to Netflix or whatever, even if you're not using it. You know what I mean? So it's very easy for people to buy nowadays. And with coaching, it, it, it needs to be just as easy. You know, if you're sending them a link, like they got to go to their email and then they've got to find the email and they've got to click on the link. And they, it doesn't sound like, oh, is that really that hard? Not really, but when it's so easy to just go into Amazon, you have to type in your password and click two buttons or one button to buy something and it shows up on your doorstep two days later, right? You know, yes, go in your email, clicking a link and then taking their credit card out and, and then typing all the information is, yes, that's a lot of work. Whereas at point of sale, when you say, great, what's the billing address? What's your credit card number? Blah, blah, blah. Thank you so much. Here's what I'm gonna do. We've set this up. I can't wait for our first session. Hang up the phone and they're done. Now you've got their credit card. So now when it comes time for renewal, it's very easy to discuss those terms. You know, when you're coming on to that, let's say that eighth night session and we're talking about it, what does that look like for you? I said, great, do you want to do another nine sessions? Great, you paid in full for the first time. Do you want to do that again? Do you want to use the same card that I have on file? Yes, absolutely, great, done deal. End of conversation. They don't need to go to another link. You don't need to do any work in terms of sending that to them. They don't need to go to their purse or, or wallet again. It's done. Um, on recurring payments with people, you know, if they're setting it up when they're paying whatever, $200 a month or whatever that is on automatic payments, when we get to that spot, it's just a matter of like, hey, listen, you know, um, it, I talk about you know, what they want to do and continue our work together. And I just say, hey, we can go on a session per session basis. I'll just keep track of the sessions. If, if it works for you, we can just keep on the same automatic payments and we'll just go from there. And they're like, yeah, Jeff, that works great. In other words, we just keep doing sessions and I just keep track of them and they just keep on the automatic payments, right? And that's it, that's the end of the conversation. And it, so it makes buying very easy. Those are very, very important pieces um, that if you, if you can adopt those, not if you can, that I recommend you adopt into your business. Um, and when you set it up like that, it just makes it a whole lot easier for people to continue on, of course, when the value is absolutely there. Um, now let's talk about you know, managing those people you know, and managing that. Um, you know, how do you follow up with people and things like that? And I'm gonna like, in the world of technology, in, in just program after program that's out there, I'm gonna just make this really like dumb, simple, and cheap too, <laughs> but cheap in a, in, a, in a good way, right? And I'm gonna say this, and, and, and mind you, I will say this with, I'm not a tech, um, I'm not a tech guru, but I'm definitely not afraid of tech. I love technology, I use technology all the time, so I, I'm not like, oh, you just do this because you don't, you're not a tech person. It's like, yeah. I, you know, so I'm not the guru, but I definitely enjoy and love tech, so and, and promote it where it's necessary. But in terms of 
uh, you know, promoting and like even following up. Like I, I would tell you this, like I'm holding in front of me, I'm in my office, I am holding a just larger than, um, it's like a small piece of paper, all right? Maybe the size of my hand outstretched, right? And on it is a list of clients. These are my active clients. And then also um, past clients that I've worked with, let's say in, in the recent year, all right? And so, and I just add their, literally, it's a piece of paper with, and I write their name in pencil. When, when someone hires me, one of the things I do is I write their name on pencil on this little list. And at the beginning of every week, I go down this list and I scroll through and I start from the bottom, if you will, which is my, are my most current clients. And I make sure that of my most current clients, the ones I'm actively coaching with, I make sure they're in the schedule, number one. If they're not in the schedule, I, I need to know like, okay, well, have we talked about, okay, we're going to follow up in a week or two or what's going on with that. So if, if I don't know that, then I reach out to them. But if they're in the schedule or they're all set or we've communicated recently, you know, within the week or so, then it's just like, just keep going down the list, right? Till all my active clients, if you will, are taken care of. Like yesterday was Monday and, and I reached out to five or six clients that just, they're active, but they're kind of like doing some things on their world. So it's probably been a month or so since we've coached and probably a couple of weeks since we've touched base. And I'm just letting them know, hey, how's things going? Where are you at? What's going on? You know, keep, you know, are you ready for the next session yet? What's going on? Give me an idea. You know, I'm here for you. I'm thinking about you. I'm just like, I'm there for them. I want them to know that like I'm here, you know, just because they're not actively coaching with me right now, for instance, or they haven't had a session in a month. You know, these are people... Um, that either maybe have still some paid sessions with me or uh, maybe their ninth session came up and but they want to do it but the timing wasn't right to do it right then and there and I'm in front of them and I'm caring about them and I treat them as if they're still my client every single day every single week um, and this is not hard to do it's just I've got this little list and, I, and I'm showing you like low tech baby it's just it's a freaking piece of paper and pencil and then, you know, every quarter or so when it just gets to the point of like, okay, I need a new, new piece of paper, I just take a new piece of paper and I rewrite some of the names and then I just weed off people that are just, yeah, we're done or it's been a while or, you know, there's just, we're, we're not coaching anymore right now or, or maybe never again. Um, and then I just keep that current list. So low tech, um, but, but that's a way of staying in front of people. And then also clients that I haven't worked with in a while, you know, and they're on that list, I will go through and, and I will touch base with them um, every so often. When I say every so often, is it's just a feel. You know, so I'm not writing to them every week, every month. It's just of like, you know what? That's of like, how, how much extra time do I have right now? Do I have a little bit of gap where I'm doing some marketing? Can I touch base with those people? So yeah, there's points where, especially in my marketing, where I go, okay, I, um, I've got some clients that are maybe finishing up. I've got room for some more people on my schedule or, or based on knowing how long clients are working with me for and maybe where my, all my currents are in that process. Maybe I have you know, a good handful or more of them in their maybe mid-teen in their sessions, like 15, 16 sessions. And I'm like, all right, on average, you know, there's gonna be one maybe of them that are gonna continue on much longer than that. But on average, you know, I got about five or six people probably in the next month or so that are gonna be done. Um, okay, that I don't wanna get to that spot and be like, shit, <laughs> what am I doing? You know, so that's when I start going through and I, and I go, th I start with clients, people that have hired me in the past and I just, I reach out to them and I, hey, how's it going? What's going on? Tell me about your business. And I'll ask them some questions, you know, based on the work that we've done together. And I try and dig up some things to find out, you know, are they still moving forward? Are they still doing some stuff? And again, I treat them as if they never hired me in the sense that I'm looking for that timing and the need. I'm qualifying them to potentially make another approach um, and saying, hey, listen, would, it sounds like you're really going after this or you're, you're challenged with it. Would you consider working with me again? You know, it, and it's all obviously a lot easier because you've got the relationship as opposed to a brand new person and making that approach. But again, everything I teach in terms of selling, of finding timing and needs so you can make a needs-based approach, I do with those people. And so it's, that's where it's really important that you understand the life cycle of your clients. If I uh, circle back to the very beginning and, and talking about knowing your statistics and numbers, um, that's where this is especially gonna help you. And again, it's not, it's not an exact science, obviously, but again, it's just that barometer of that internal knowing uh, of your, um, you know, where your clients are, 
um, also energetically where they are in their result cycle, if you will. Um, it's, it's kind of the synthesis of that, but once you do it enough and understanding it, that's where, important, that's where it's important to start saying, wow, I've gotta, I might need to ramp up my, you know, my marketing or connecting with some people a little bit more. Um, so you know, with that being said, that's, that's that strategy there. Um, and then even you know, keeping track of sessions and knowing where that all is, like I said, I'm keeping it low, low tech. I have a paper calendar. Um, all, of, all of when I record my income, when people pay me and things like that, and, and keeping track of that stuff, I keep it track like an Excel spreadsheet. Very, very simple. Um, so there's no uh, making appointments, scheduling with people. Like I said, it's all, I don't use any, anything electronic for that. It's just my paper calendar. I'm not saying you, have, you should do something like that because there are people that would be like, no, electronic works great and what electronic does. I'm just trying to show you that you, whatever, even if you are electronic, using simple things like you know, Google, Google calendars um, and things like that are just very easy to use and, and they don't cost you anything. You don't need to go get a subscription to you know, one of the million programs out there for whatever it is a month to get all these fancy schmancy calendars because I want to be talking to people and booking them because when you talk to people before you book them, it's called qualifying them as opposed to just, just giving out your stuff for free for, to unqualified people. Oh, 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 oh,